Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well. Today is a really exciting video. I am finally going to be sharing with you guys my PGC folder. So hopefully you can get lots of tips in terms of how you can organize the folder into different sections, but also what examples of evidence can you include to make sure that you've got enough evidence to pass your PGC. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sophia. I'm a secondary school science teacher in South London. I'm currently head of biology and I make lots of YouTube videos just sharing with you guys my experience of being a teacher. So I share lots of teacher vlogs, which I'll link up in the cards above, but also lots of different tips and advice to do with your teacher training, your NQT year, but also lots of things to do with teaching and learning in general, like lesson planning, dual coding, cognition, marking, feedback, assessment, etc, etc, etc. So if you enjoyed this video and some of my other videos, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that you can always follow me on Instagram for more daily updates. Now let's get into the video. So the first thing with your PGC folder is that I recommend that you get a large binder, just like this one here, um, just so that you can fit all of the evidence rather than having two separate um, thinner folders. I would then recommend that you start having your PGC folder set up from the beginning so then you can add to it as you collect the evidence throughout your placements so that when it comes to the end of your PGC year, you've got a ton of evidence just to sift through and almost edit and refine and decide which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't want to have in there. If you're wondering what is a PGC, PGC stands for Postgraduate Certificate in Education and what that essentially means is your teacher training year. So it's the year in which you train to become a teacher, whether that is primary or whether that is secondary and whatever subject that is. So you need to be able to evidence how you have met the teaching standards. So the teaching standards in the UK have two parts. There is part one and part two. Part one has eight teaching standards. So you want to make sure that you've got binders within your folder to divide each of those teaching standards. So then you can have evidence that shows that you have met each one. Part two of the teaching standards is a lot more to do with your code of conduct. There isn't a lot of evidence that you need for that apart from the formal documentation. I also recommend that you have lots of evidence stored digitally. So in your emails, for example, have a folder where you can just drag different emails as evidence. It's up to you whether you want those emails to just be one folder or if you want a folder under your email inbox for each teaching standard. But I would definitely recommend that you have on your desktop a PGC folder where you can drag different types of documents, particularly when you're coming to collect evidence from students' books. It's really difficult at the end of your PGC to collect student um, examples of their work because you might not be teaching them, you might have moved to a different placement school, COVID might have happened. So I highly recommend that you collect evidence of student work as and when you see them. So take their books, scan them through a printer as a PDF, and then that will get emailed to you and you can then drag that PDF into your email inbox folder or onto a desktop folder for you to print a little bit later. Now, when it comes to organising your PGC folder, you want to make sure that you are documenting all of that evidence in a way that will make sense to whoever is seeing the folder. There's nothing worse than making a folder that makes sense to you, but is then not user friendly for someone else. Now, truth be told, no one is actually going to go and sift through every single document with an eye for detail. No one is going to be micromanaging your folder, but I think it's really, really useful to be open and honest about what evidence you've collected uh, to show your mentor in your different places, but also your mentor at your university. So they can give you some feedback as to whether those pieces of evidence are actually showing your competency at meeting the requirements. So if you're a little bit unsure of what the requirements are, when you are training to be a teacher, you can be unsatisfactory, satisfactory, good or outstanding. Now, of course, all of us want to be good or outstanding, and that is the goal. But a lot of you might end up being unsatisfactory or satisfactory, depending on what happens in your placement schools. So don't be alarmed or concerned. I'm sure that there are lots of other videos talking about their own experiences. So I'll try to find some to link above in the cards. But it is normal to go through a period of stagnation in progress. Um, and reaching that satisfactory requirement. But it's all about what evidence you collate that can then show your mentor at your placement schools and your mentor at your university that actually you've made so much progress that you deserve a good or an outstanding. 
So just bear in mind that all of this evidence is just to give you some confidence that you've actually made the progress in meeting those teaching standards, but also then to evidence what the outcome of your PGC is going to be. So I'm not going to be showing you the first part of my folder because there's a lot of confidential and sensitive information, but I'll try my best to show you how I've organised that, but also then when it comes to the teaching standards and the evidence that I've collated, I'll show you lots of different examples so that you can get some inspiration. So like I said, just for privacy and confidentiality reasons, I'm not going to show you these first three ones, but I will tell you what they are. So this first one is my NASWAT certificate. So this is the union, just to say that I attended a conference during my PGC um, and it has my notes on that conference. This one is just a cover with the university logo, my name, my tutor and the academic year. I then have a few documents talking about my mental meeting notes. So this is a table with each mental meeting that I had from university and the date and a brief summary of what we discussed in each of those meetings. So that is a double sided page and I got my mentor to sign at the bottom. I then have almost like a an extended CV. So I've got an audit of my previous experience, just looking at the years what I, what my roles were, what age group of the children I was working with and how that supported me with, you know, collating some evidence for my PGC. So I then have three folders and these are all to do with the three mentors that I had. So this one is my mentor number one. This one is my mentor number two at my first placement. And this one is my mentor at my second placement. In each of these, I've got my mental meeting notes that has the summary of what we discussed in the mental meeting. It has my actions and then I review them a little bit later just with ticking them off to say whether I had met them. And these have also been ordered chronologically uh, with the first date on the top and the last meeting at the bottom. And I've also held them with a paperclip. OK, these next three ones are my timetables. So I actually had two placements. But in my second placement, I had two timetables. So the first one is my timetable at my first placement. And then the next two are my timetables at my second placement, because my third timetable has an increase in the number of hours, which is something that I had requested because I really wanted to make sure I was prepared for September. These three are my reports. At the end of each term, you have a PGC report that is filled out by your mentor and you then uh, write a comment as well to agree and to evidence that you've met those teaching standards and that you agree with the actions that have been mentioned. So I just have a printed version of that report and I've placed them into three separate files. I then included the three evidence documents that I collated together to evidence how I've met each of those teaching standards for those reports. So I'll zoom in now and show you a little bit of that. So here you can see that what I've done is for each of the teaching standards, I wrote a little paragraph and then I wrote down the evidence. So I just completed this for all eight teaching standards and I did this in preparation for each of those reports. And I sent that to my mentor before she completed the formal report, which I just showed you. So this one here is a printed reflection of my essays. So I've also just written on a little index card the two essays that I did, what the titles of those essays were, what I achieved in those essays. And then I've printed uh, one of the proformas we had to fill out for both of those essays. I then have a certificate of completion of a primary school experience. As I'm training to be a secondary school teacher, it was important that I still was working in a primary school. So this was four days full time in a primary school and it was really fun, uh, but I've just printed the confirmation that I completed that. And this is a teacher standard pro forma. I wanted to have a printed version so that I could actually tick off that I have evidence for each of these. Um, and I found that really useful to keep at hand here at the section of my folder, just so then as I was working my way through it, I could, um, you know, have examples of what I was thinking for each of those teaching standards. Now, this was a game changer. I thought that this would be really useful to put together. So what I've done is I've just introduced the structure and the layout of the folder. And then I've got all of the different pieces of uh, evidence that I've included for each teaching standard, uh, just as a little bit of a contents page. 
um, so that it can be really easy to navigate through the rest of the folder now in terms of going through the evidence. So you can see that from the evidence that I've chosen, a lot of it relies on the formal observation notes and on the lesson plans. I've been really specific with what year group it was and the title, so I could show a range of different topics and sciences, but also different key stages. And then also you can see that I've included examples of students' work and examples from different PowerPoints and resources that I have made. And you can also see that I've put together different audits um, to improve my subject knowledge just as a measure of my progress in tackling those concepts. So that's also some evidence of what I've done as some self-study. A little bit more of the same, lesson plans, formal observations, student work, but here you can start to see that I'm looking at including some of my organisation, some of my medium term plans and that forward planning, some formal assessments, certificates of courses that I've completed, marking that I have done, emails and extra CPD, so some notes and some printed sessions as well. So the other thing I just wanted you to notice is that for most teaching standards, I have a handful of pieces of evidence. I'm just going to show you a few now so you get a little bit of an idea of how I put them together. So this is what I was talking about, how it's important to just have these separate binders. And then I just wrote down the title of the teaching standard and I've just separated that throughout the folder. OK, so here is an example of how I used formal observation notes from a teacher that observed my lesson as evidence. So what I did was I highlighted what was um, useful for this piece of feedback. And then I wrote on an index card how that meets particular criteria for that teaching standard. Here you can see a different example and another example and another one. And this is an example of using the different slides from PowerPoint that I used in setting expectations for different types of activities. And I just annotated on them to show how that meets the criteria for that teaching standard. So to show progress of students using data, I printed this from Sims and I anonymized the student's name. And then I just picked out the relevant bits of information and I summarized them on this index card. I also included lesson plans to show how I've met and also made progress in my lesson plan writing throughout all of the different teaching standards. And here's an example of evidence that I included in teaching standard two for progress of what I prepared for a parents evening. So I've got the names just under my fingers there of the students that I anonymized. And then I've just got the progress that they made, what I'm happy with and what their targets should be. But then I also left some space to write down any notes from the parents evening itself, just so then I can reflect on that and include that in my future planning. And here are some examples of resources that I made. I chose to include this in Teaching Standard 2. But what's really good about this one is I've included a picture of some work that a student has produced in response to what I was teaching them. So you can see that this is the same type of question. I modelled it for them and then they had a go at a question. So it shows their progress. So for subject knowledge, I actually included some notes that I did when I was revising a topic. This was just an example of how I was doing my self-study and that is really important to improve my A-level biology skills at the time. So here you can see that I'm using different examples of student work to show how they've made progress in terms of their graph skills. So I've just included lots of different printouts of the activity, the work that they previously did, and then their work that they have currently done to show that progress. This was the audit of the different topics and me just reflecting on my confidence and whether I still need to go back over it towards the end of the PGC. So that was a very comprehensive overview. I would say that for teaching standard four, planning and teaching, it's really important to include lots of different types of lessons and to also show how you progress from your first placement to your second placement. So not just including lesson plans of what you have done in the last couple of months before you submit to the folder, but really important to show that journey and that progress that you made. So here was an example of a Simpsons task that I created from scratch and I just sort of narrated the type of activity and why that was useful. I also included the evidence of the student work in response to that lesson. I've showed math skills, literacy skills, uh, scaffolding, different tasks, stretch and challenge, differentiating down, doing project based learning, tackling misconceptions. And here was an example of my medium term plan at the time. So I also just wanted to show evidence of how I'm able to 
plan for a topic to be taught sequentially, looking at that backwards planning model, but also thinking about where I need to include literacy skills, math skills, retrieval practice, etc. More highlighting so that it meets the teaching standard. I've included evidence of an evaluation of a lesson that I taught for a formal observation. And I think this was really important for me to include in the lesson planning because this was specifically talking about lesson planning for a practical lesson in science. So I wanted to show that I was really thinking about the safety, thinking about the demo and all of those aspects in terms of what I would change next time. Lots of different examples of activities that I did with my students. and how we used modelling and flipped learning as well. So here's some evidence for teaching standard five of using mind maps as differentiated work where I actually scaffolded the mind map ahead of time for them so that they can then have these prompts to then support them. And this is an example of a student's work. Here's an example of a seating plan and me tracking my movement around the classroom so that it is informed movement and also color coding it depending on whether they were a pupil premium, a gifted and talented English as additional language or special educational needs student. And here I'm showing the homework checklist that I used for a class. More seating plans, how my seating plans developed over time. So for assessment for learning, you can see here how I've planned for the different questions that I wanted to ask. And I think this really met that criteria for questioning that comes under teaching standard six. This is more evidence from a observation form that a teacher filled out for me when she observed me teach the lesson. So for example, me using traffic light cards, peer assessment, modeling, doing gap fills. So that was all really useful for me to have as evidence for teaching standard six. And here's some example of what I included in my slides. So swapping books, doing peer assessment, thinking about the skills, what went well, even better ifs, how to give feedback, hinge point questions as well more hinge point questions, quizzes, matching tasks, gap fills, organizers, and this was me using uh, Mark Smarter, which is a tool online where you can actually type in the feedback and it just makes it a lot easier for your workload and it ends up printing it like this. So then all you have to do is cut them out and then give them to the students. Here's an example. Always include lots of examples of students' book and work. So here's an example of their self-assessment and, and any corrections that they made. And here's an example of doing more peer assessment in which I gave students a pro forma for their presentation feedback. So for behaviour management, really important to reflect on what strategies I used. And also I took some pictures of the board as I was using warning systems and praise and consequences and detentions. So I actually included my observation notes of lessons in which the teachers had strong behaviour management and I wrote a bit of a reflection of how that was useful to me. So for wider professional responsibilities, a lot of these are emails, so I'm just going to keep that private. But the underlying message here is emails to show your parent communication, parents evening, trips, any extracurricular clubs, any additional CPD or courses that I've done, all of it is evidenced in there. And I also included a presentation that I gave to our cohort at the time and also a little blurb on any meetings that I attended. Instead of including emails for each of these things, I decided it was going to be a lot more effective to summarize them on a paper and split them into trips and then events. And that just details information um, that I did as additional responsibilities. And that is it for today's video. I hope you have found it really useful. Please do let me know in the comments section down below what else you would add to your PGC folder or if you've got any other questions as I would be more than happy to help. I will see you guys really soon in another video. For now, take care, have a beautiful week and see you soon. Bye!